Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechah HaKodash, double honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, who all learned the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from, and peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect, the men, women, and children that are predestined to receive salvation, and to be the first fruits of the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel, staying in Holy Spirit to the best of your ability, and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai day in and day out. So, Brother Itazawam. Um, I just wanted to you know, play this real quick. Um, I'm not going to speak too much on it because, you know, they, uh, you know, they got the algorithms and they, uh, you know, strike it. But just listen to what this uh, retired general whose name is Stanley McChrystal says. All right. Concerning the uh, dragon juice. And as you see the title up there, I am for a national you know, Vanessa mandate. All right. But just listen to what he says in the verbiage that he uses, because ultimately what these, what these, uh, what the, what these devils want, all right, what this, this beast, this dragon wants is your total allegiance. All right. That, that is what he wants. He wants the allegiance of the world to his image. So, you know, I'm just going to play this and I'm going to get like one or two scriptures. Like the biggest impediment is vaccine hesitancy and it has been maybe for a while. So how would we overcome that given what your research has told you doing the book? Yeah, I would say the things on that started with communication. Early, we needed to communicate a clear message that wouldn't be complete as you're still learning, but a clear message and send it out. This is a nation at war. And these are the things we, this nation at war against COVID, have to do. We need to get a narrative that says it is our responsibility to be part of that war. Part of that is getting vaccinated, not to protect ourselves, but to protect our flanks, to protect our comrades, to protect the other people who rely upon us. We needed the ability to make decisions quickly. And of course, we needed leadership. We needed senior people to stand up and say, these are tough decisions. Vaccine hesitancy has some, you know, deep seated, uh, almost emotional reasons because people have opposed other vaccines. But this is a time when we either come together and make potentially frightening decisions such as being vaccinated or we fail. And I would argue that we allowed way too much misinformation and disinformation to pollute the conversation. Does that lend itself to a national vaccine mandate, therefore? Yeah. Personally, if you're asking Stan McChrystal, I am for that. I think that we have certain mandates. We say you must take your, you must pay your taxes. You must serve in the military if the nation is threatened. There are things we do as part of the covenant of being a citizen in the United States of America. There are responsibilities to go with rights. And common defense doesn't mean just common defense against the British at Lexington. It means common defense against those things which harm our nation. And this is not just something that harms individual Americans. It economically weakens us. And so I, I would argue, yes, it, it would be entirely appropriate. I'm going to play it back to where he says about the covenant. I think that we have certain mandates. We say you must take your, you must pay your taxes. You must serve in the military if the nation is threatened. There are things we do as part of the covenant of being a citizen in the United States of America. There are responsibilities to go with rights. The nation is threatened. There are things we do as part of the covenant of being a citizen in the United States of America. There was now you hear the verbiage that he just used. All right. There's things we do as part of a covenant of being a citizen of the United States. Now, we know that. We being the children of the most high, the Israelites, we are in a covenant with Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, all right? But what this devil wants, as you can clearly see, he wants for us to disannul 
our covenant with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and be in a covenant with him. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay? And when you listen to a lot of these uh, talking heads, these, um, you know, political, so-called political leaders, they use certain words to... Um, you know, bring across a, a message that they want. And a lot, a lot of the times when you hear them trying to persuade the ones who are so-called hesitant to get in that dragon juice, they say you have to sacrifice for the greater good. You have to sacrifice for your fellow American. It's the patriotic thing to do. And here it is, you got this uh, retired uh, army general saying that this is a part of a covenant to be a citizen of <laughs> uh, Babylon the Great. So we're at a uh, point where ultimately we know that this is leading to that ultimate covenant that Esau Edom is going to uh, pressure the world into, into doing, which is that karagma. But here it is, they're using this uh, dragon juice to frame the uh, narrative of being under a covenant with them. So it says, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So we are supposed to be under the covenant of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai through Yahweh Shai's, um, actually, let me get that too. Through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, we are under a covenant with Yahweh. All right, this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 20. It says, Now the Most High of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Yahweh Shai, that great shepherd of the, of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Okay? So what we are seeing is... Esau setting up a, a system to where if you do not submit yourself under his covenant, you will be X'd out of his, 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 his society. But as Paul said, actually, let me get that. As Paul said, just a couple verses up, verse 14 in Hebrews 13 chapter, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And we seek that to come by way of the promise that was made unto our forefathers by the Heavenly Father, Bashem Yahweh Shai, through the covenant that was the everlasting covenant through Yahweh Shai. And that is the kingdom, the city that we seek, the, the dominion that we seek. All right. But you have a lot of people that through the pressure, through the the, the love of this present world, all right, through the allure of the flesh, they are willing and ready to, to make a covenant with Esau Edom. Let's get that. Um, where is it? Isaiah chapter 28, verse 15. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death and with hell. Remember, in the book of Habakkuk, it tells you that, that uh, uh, you know, Esau has enlarged his desires as hell, okay, and as death. So it says, we have made a covenant with death and with hell. We are at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, and who's bringing that overflowing scourge? It's ultimately Yahweh, all right, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, but he's using Esau Edom, his sword, to bring the scorch, which you see these draconian measures, these, you know, restrictions, so on and so forth. But it says, when we, uh, when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, 
For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehoods we have hid ourselves. All right? The lying wonders of Esau is pseudoscience. And when you go into this word covenant, it says allegiance pledge. Right? And that's why, you know, in grade school, they always made you every day stand up and pledge allegiance to the flag. Right? Put your hand over your heart. And they, and they do that at, at uh, you know, venues, all right, football games, basketball games, so on and so forth. But the thing is, when you go into this word here, it says origin, H1262, in the sense of cutting, right? In the sense of cutting. And I'm going to just leave that there. <laughs> in the sense of cutting, because ultimately, that karagma it's what? It's an incision. It's a cutting that shows your allegiance to your master. Just like how for us to when we confirm the when we confirm the covenant, uh, you know, with Moses, we had to do what? Well, actually, before that, uh, uh, with Abraham. We did what? We uh, cut the foreskins of our, you know, rods are right, being circumcised. That was the covenant. Um, that was a, the symbolism of the covenant. And here Esau is doing the same thing to the world to show. So people can show that they have a, uh, a covenant with his system. All right. So. You know, I'm in that here, Lord willing. This was edifying unto the elect. All praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Rakakwadash. Shalom.